What up, yo? Pulling up in the Colonel Sanders 17, the Brooks Ghost Max 2 today. So we're gonna do a training talk on zone two running, how to think about heart rate on easy runs. I'm gonna get some miles in the Ghost Max 2, and I'm also gonna tell you about, hey, you guys already know. You know what I'm telling you about. Supwell app, $1 a month. If you wanna have more discussions on training, I actually just had someone, I looked at the comment from yesterday's video, he said, dude, you should start a Discord so that we can have a place to talk about shoes. I said, bro, actually, I actually didn't say anything, I'm gonna respond to him, bro, it's all on the Supple app. You can post any questions you want about shoes. We have a forum in there. So I'm realizing we have, a, we have an awareness problem right now about all the great stuff that's in the Supwell ecosystem. Of course, everyone who's watching this knows about the YouTube channel, but check out supwell.io. I've been spending a lot of time over the past week rebuilding the shoe database so you can go in there and evaluate any of the best shoes that have dropped this year they're all in there it's completely up to date now it has also reviews of all the shoes that have run in the past few week one paragraph written reviews you can compare them you can look at the specs of it you can see all the tech and then you can also watch the videos right on the page and there's a shoe matcher quiz so if you want to say hey i want a soft shoe i want a daily trainer i want a max stack shoe it will spit out the best shoes for you and then of course we have the supwell app the link is in the description below. You can sign up to buy, buy, sell, and trade gently used running shoes. So we have a lot going on in the Supple ecosystem. We also have an Instagram that nobody follows because I don't post there. Charlie keeps telling me to talk about the Instagram, but you, you can follow it if you want or don't because I don't have an Instagram strategy yet. But thank you everyone for watching the YouTube. We do have a YouTube channel and we post here. And thank you to everyone who's on the Supwell app. It's the best community for hobby joggers out there and the supwell.io shoe database is the best shoe database in the world it really is so go check it out and if you don't think it's the best shoe database in the world let me know why in the comments and we're going to make it the best shoe database in the world all right let's get into a zone two low heart rate baby bagel hit rate is just so low it's embarrassingly low but today we're going to talk about heart rate on easy runs i don't call runs easy runs i say relaxed miles or aerobic base building miles i like the word relaxed because that's my mindset on any runs where i'm not going out there and trying to hit a certain pace it's not i'm taking it easy today and running is never easy i run 100 miles a week and most of that's around a 7.30 or a 7 to 8 pace. And sometimes I'll go run with Charlie and the family and we're doing 10-minute miles, 10.30, 11-minute miles. And she says, does it feel like walking to you? I say, no, running never feels like walking to me. Running is running and running is never easy. It can feel relaxed. It can feel smooth. We can feel comfortable. And that is the goal of a lot of heart rate training, but it's never easy. So today we're going to talk about what to do, how to think about heart rate on easy runs or how to think about heart rate on relaxed runs. Also the purpose of doing relaxed miles. What is the purpose of doing zone two or relaxed miles or aerobic base building miles? And then talk you through my general philosophy on it and also how to apply it into your training. Because the way that I do it is not gonna be the way that everyone else does it, but hopefully it'll give you some insights to apply to your training. People have been liking these training videos, so let me know what other topics you want to see. I am going to eat this burnt bagel. And then we can, we can pick our shoes. I need to pick my shoes. I think, I'm thinking, I was initially thinking Brooks Ghost Max, but it's raining and the Brooks Ghost Max are white. So maybe we'll do Puma Mag Max. One of those. I'm going something cushioned and comfortable this morning for relaxed miles. We hit 23 yesterday, so... I'm gonna butter this, or peanut butter this bagel, this burnt, burnt guy. This is honestly so embarrassing, man. I'm talking about Supple Kitchen pulling up with burnt bagel. It's, it's black. This is not even burnt. This is incinerated. The thing is, okay, it always, I get banged on the second toast because Charlie put this down and then I came back and it was cold, so I put it down again. That's what happened yesterday. Some days they don't go down far enough, so I have to come back and put it again. And look at that, I got banged. All right. I'm going to eat. I'll see you guys. 
Bada boom, bada bang. You can't even tell that it's burnt. Look at that. You can't even tell it's burnt because it's so peanut buttery. Let's go. to come clean this morning with the mayo max twos pull up in the will levis twos <laughs> out here looking like a university of kentucky frat this morning let's go so the thing is mag max is great from puma but i've highlighted it a ton and people have been asking me for some insights on this so this is what we're going to do for our relax miles this morning now I did just map out. I took some notes. I don't do this very often, but I'm trying to up my game when it comes to these these training videos and giving you the best insights out there. So I was hitting the books. I reread my Daniels. I reread Hansons and Fitz to break down the five key benefits of running at a relaxed effort or what typically corresponds to zone two. Now you'll hear a lot of people talk about zone two running. So first, let's define what that means. Let's define what, what zones are in the first place. So when most people talk about zone two, they're talking about the second zone in a five zone system. So it goes from zone one to zone five. One would be walking, extremely light jogging, maybe even sitting on the couch. And this is where the lines get mixed sometimes about where zone one starts, but extremely light effort not strenuous at all zone two is what people think about and talk about with running it relax miles that's what a lot of people say zone two now the lines get blurred here as well because for a lot of people it's impossible to stay within zone two when you just start running so this is the entire point of this conversation today thinking about first principles going back to basics. Is this straight here? Let's go back to film school basics. I never went to film school, by the way. I have a political science degree. You guys know that? Poli sci. I'm gonna shout out to all my poli sci people out there putting work. Yeah, what what is the point of zone two running? Or let's define zone two. So typically that would be roughly 60 to 80% of maximum heart rate. So if your heart rate is 200, if your max heart rate is 200, Roughly, that would correspond to 130 to 160. That wasn't that wasn't perfect math. But zone two is a relaxed effort. You're not breathing hard. You're not going all out. And one of the reasons why beginning runners struggle so much with zone two, and this came up when I did the recovery run video a few weeks ago, is because you need to have developed skill as a runner to even be able to associate the word relaxed with the word running. When I say a relaxed run, that sounds like an oxymoron. It sounds like a contradiction to a lot of people, a walking paradox. Shout out to Tyler the Creator. I need to listen to the new album, by the way. And Tyler the Creator is always, it's one of those, it's one of those guys where maybe I'll like it if I get into it, but I know it's just gonna be weird. I don't, I don't really love weird music. I just want, I like that hustle grind music. I'm listening to Currency, Larry June, Payroll, even Cardo's and dropping some bars. Just give me that motivation. But zone two. That's the motivation we need. And for a lot of people, zone two is the motivation we need because it encourages us to run relaxed. So keeping the heart rate below that roughly 80% threshold. Now, if you're just starting out, it's dang near impossible to do that and our heart rate drifts into zone three. What is zone three? Zone three is steady. Zone three is moderately hard for a runner like me and I can control where my heart rate goes based on controlling my effort. That's not gonna be the same for everybody, and that, that this is the issue with the heart rate zones. For newer runners, the effort you're putting out isn't gonna correspond to your heart rate all the time because your heart rate is gonna spike more because you don't have the years of aerobic endurance built up. Now zone four is typically what we get into when we're doing race paces. This is a much faster, pace for me this is dang near all my workout paces most of my race paces are in zone four this is the heart is pumping and getting really hard to breathe and zone five is all out and for marathon training i'm basically never in a zone five now if you're just starting out running a lot of your miles are going to be in zone three in zone four 
So those are the five heart rate zones defined. They all have a place in a distance running system. Today we are just gonna be talking about zone two. Now I have an entire video on why I do not do heart rate training, but for the purposes of this video, we are going to be talking about the benefits of keeping our heart rate within that zone two or roughly corresponding to relaxed efforts. And to sum up or to summarize what I said in that other video, the reason I don't do heart rate training is just because it's annoying. I don't like looking at my watch. I don't like the computers telling me whether I'm running correctly or not. And having to monitor my heart rate, that contradicts the purpose of zone two because the entire purpose is to run at a relaxed pace. And I'm not relaxed when I'm looking at my heart rate and that makes my heart rate jack up. So that's why I don't personally do it. But if you look at my heart rate and the watch isn't always accurate, that's another reason why I don't do it. I usually am within zone two on my relaxed miles because that's just what feels relaxed to me. And as you get more miles under your belt, naturally on your relaxed everyday runs, you will be within that zone two. So let's go over the five benefits of relaxed running top to bottom. I brought my gosh dang notes out today. Look at this, bang. Ooh, we don't wanna, <laughs> that was the logo of another brand. I have a sticker on the back, bang. There we go. So first benefit of zone two running or relaxed running is we can go farther. We can go farther. This is not scientific. Well, it is scientific, but just think about this logically. So if your everyday running pace that feels mildly relaxed to you is a nine minute pace, you can go out and jog at that nine minute pace for 30 minutes to 40 minutes and you'll feel fine. Now, if your 5K PR is a 7.30 pace, that corresponds to what? A 20, I don't know, 24 minute, 23 minute 5K? If you're running at 7.30 pace, by definition, if that's your 5K PR, you can only last 23, 24, 25 minutes. So by slowing it down to that nine minute pace, you'll be able to last 30, 40, 50 minutes or an hour. So we'll be able to get more time, we'll be able to go farther by slowing it down in zone two. The simplest possible way to summarize the benefits of zone two running is just that. We can run more. We can go farther because we're not gonna get winded. When our heart rate goes up, our breathing gets heavier, we don't even have to think about the science. Don't even think about the science. Just think about when you're running wind sprints back in the day. Why did you have to stop? Why were you keeling over? during the middle of basketball practice or field hockey practice. We got any field hockey fans out there? Charlie, my wife, she actually played field hockey in Boston. She always brags about she, it was part of the Harvard University field hockey development program when she was a kid. So good for her. They went to Epcot or something. Flexing on me, talking about the Harvard field hockey. But that is the, the simplest way to describe the benefits of zone two. When we slow it down, we'll be able to run for longer. That is it. I could stop this video right now and that could summarize the benefit of zone two because for most of us when we're start, starting running off, starting running off, when we're starting a journey of training for a half marathon or a marathon or a 5K, the limiter is not speed, right? The limiter for us starting out is not speed. You can get up off the couch, you could sprint for 10 seconds down the street or 30 seconds or you could run hard for a minute and you're gonna be running at a pretty good clip no matter what your fitness is. It's just you're not gonna be able to hold that pretty good clip for a long time. So by slowing it down, you'll be able to hold the faster paces for longer and you'll be able to develop some of the scientific and molecular benefits that also come with zone two. So before we get into those, the second benefit of zone two here, again, I'm gonna go for start off simplest, broadest, and then we can dive into the science. But the second benefit is not only can we go farther, we can run more. Now, when we're starting out, another limiter is not gonna be our aerobic capacity. So when I say aerobic capacity, it's keeping our heart rate within roughly that zone two. That is going to be our aerobic threshold. And that's why zone two is so important is because when we pass the top of zone two, and it's not a, it's not a clear demarcation, it's a dotted line, but Think about it this way, when your heart starts pounding and you can't breathe and you feel like you need to puke, you're, you've passed your aerobic threshold. You're no longer aerobic and you're, it's actually not, you're not gonna be getting as much benefit because the heart gets strengthened, which I'll get into in a second, but the heart gets strengthened just as much, if not more, when we're in this relaxed running area 
because of the blood is the stroke volume and the tempo of the heartbeat is right in that perfect zone. So by surpassing that, we're not getting more, much more benefit and we're putting more stress on our body. So again, think about the 5K where you're going out and you're running as fast as you can for 23, 24, 25, 26 minutes. You can only sustain that pace for 25 minutes. Meanwhile, you slow it down, feels a lot more relaxed. You can run for an hour. And if you were to do that 5K every single day, what do you think is gonna happen? How are your knees gonna feel? How are your muscles gonna feel? How is your brain gonna feel psychologically waking up every morning and thinking, oh my gosh, I gotta go try to take another 10 seconds off my 5K PR today? Didn't I just do that yesterday? Didn't I just do that two days ago? Oh man, this is, ah. I don't like this running thing because every time I go out here, it's painful. So that's the benefit of slowing it down. The stress on our body is lower. And when I say body, that means muscles. That also means the brain. There's no way in heck, no matter how experienced we are, go look at Connor Mance. Go look at his Strava or Rory Linkletter as a Canadian Olympian. Connor Mance is the US fastest US marathoner this year. They're not going out and running marathon pace workouts or 5k pace workouts every day a lot of their relaxed runs are not the same pace as my relaxed runs <laughs> they're running on a seven minute pace or maybe a 6 30 pace some days a 7 30 or even an eight minute pace the top fastest distance runners in the world are running their miles relaxed because the body needs time to recover so that's another benefit of zone two. First, we can run farther just physiologically we're not gonna be limited by the pace when we slow it down. Think about this, right? You could walk all day. You could walk for 10 hours if you needed to. When we're just starting out, we couldn't run for 10 hours. And then second, we can run more because the stress on our body is low. If we're trying to 5K PR every day, we're gonna flame out, whether that's our, our body or our brain. But if we're slowing it down and we're running a pace that we could sustain for 10 hours, or at least we could sustain for 10 miles, or maybe just an hour, if we're running that pace, we could do that every day. Now when you're starting out, the pace that you could run for an hour is gonna feel a lot smoother than my pace that I could run for an hour. The pace that I could run for an hour, that's a fast, painful pace. And as we progress as runners, we get the privilege of accessing more of these fast, painful paces. So slowing it down, you can go farther, you could run more, the stress on the body is gonna be lower. And think about this too, the muscles that we're using, running is a skill. It's like bench pressing. It's like anything else. The muscles have to be trained. We're, the, all the gains that we make within the first two, three months of running, they're not even physical gains. Think about the body. You will get some aerobic gains, but they are neurological brain-body connection gains. It's like playing a game of pool. You ever go to a cabin and you're playing a game of pool in the first few rounds, you're absolutely trash. Then by the end of the game, you're sniping it off, hitting the corner pocket angles because you're getting the brain-body connection with the cue ball. That's the same thing with running. We have to teach the body what it feels like to run a certain way and we're recruiting more of the muscle fibers, the slow twitch muscle fibers that we need to run. Again, going back to the sprinting down the street or running a 5K, those are different muscle fibers than we're gonna be using to run a half marathon or a marathon. Fast twitch muscle fibers versus slow twitch muscle fibers. And the slower we go, the more the slow twitch muscle fibers are needed, the faster we go, the more the fast twitch muscle fibers are needed. So by slowing it down, we're recruiting the exact, we're recruiting the exact muscle fibers we need and we're working the exact skill that we need to get faster. And we're keeping the stress on the body low so that we can recover and the injury risk is lower. That's a huge benefit of zone two, man. Cause you could run zone three, you can get a lot of the same benefits by Baking the pace a little bit faster so if zone two is relaxed and zone three is moderately hard you can get a lot of the same physiological benefits which we'll get to those are the next three benefits you'll get a lot of those same ones in zone three and in some cases you'll get more of them but the injury risk will be higher and the toll on the brain the toll on the brain will be higher man if you ever done anything marathon training half marathon training you know when you're in the peak of that training waking up every day knowing you have to go out and grind some miles it gets tough. Or if you've ever been in college and you, you have midterms or exam week, finals, and it's, man, I got a chemistry final today. I have a history final tomorrow. I have the econ final. It's a grind. 
right? It's a grind. You can't do that every week. You cannot. You will burn out. So that's what zone two or relaxed paces do. Makes it easier to consistently execute. All right, benefit number three. And check my notes here. Strengthening the heart. Strengthening the heart. So now let's get into some of the scientific benefits. I touched on this earlier, but when we run any of these aerobic paces and you have a range of aerobic paces and a lot of the moderate paces will do this and so we start getting the heart rate up even more to for me it's 160s to 170s the breathing becomes more strained we're sending more blood through the heart we're strengthening the ventricle the left ventricle and we're increasing the heart's ability to pump oxygen rich blood throughout the muscles. So I'm not gonna go super deep into the science here. If you want to have a great explanation, go to the Hansen's Marathon Method book and go to page 28. But think of it this way, the bench press. Again, right, the bench press, when we're bench pressing, what are we using? We're using our big old pecs. I wish I could do that thing where you flex one side and the other, I can't do that. When we're benching, that's the muscle that we're working. When we're running, the muscle that we're working is the heart. Some may argue that it's the most important muscle, but a lot of muscles are important. And running, running is a full body exercise. It works your core. That's why we run hills, baby. You're always talking about me out here slaughtering myself on the hills, run some dang hills, make America elevate again. Because that recruits a lot of muscles throughout the body. You strengthen your core, you strengthen your legs, you even strengthen your upper body, running up the hill, pumping your arms. So it's a full body exercise, but the heart is one of the most important muscles in that okay we got someone coming through now it's like i was the train was going and then i turned and then i'm gonna stop just because i'm awkward sometimes All right, so running these relaxed miles, it works the heart, strengthens the heart. And again, thinking about those first two benefits, running more and running farther, that's more stimulus for the heart. More stimulus for the heart. Remember the Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours rule? Now there's debate, is it actually 10,000 hours? No, there's no, there's no rule you have to do something for 10,000 hours to be great. But the more that we do something, the better we'll get at it. And specifically, in the case of exercise, again, if you want to max out your bench press, if you want to do a one rep max at 300 pounds, you better be knocking out a lot of reps at 225. And some reps at 250 and some reps at 275, it's the same dang thing with running. You strengthen the heart because if you're going for a four hour marathon, that heart needs to be pumping strongly for four hours. So how do you prepare the heart to be pumping strongly for four hours? Sending, in, sending oxygen rich blood throughout the body to have it pumping for four plus hours throughout the week on these relaxed runs so that's the way we do it baby we slow it down and we run relaxed so that the heart can pump and guess what if you end up running moderate and increasing the heart rate you'll get a lot of the same benefits and here's the beautiful thing a lot of us runners out there if you're gonna go out and run for an hour it is really hard as long as you're staying healthy and you're not doing anything to mess with your lower body and putting yourself into an injury risk, it is really hard to run too fast every day consistently on these relaxed runs and stay healthy. You're gonna slow down because you're gonna be tired. And so there's no need to stress out about the heart rate being too high because you can still get the benefits. Maybe there would be some marginal decreases once the heart rate passes a certain point, but you get a lot of the same benefits when you bump up into zone three. And the biggest way we can get the benefits is running consistently. This is why it's such a, I get so fired up about these things. What's the point of running? For, forget the notes. What's the point of running? To come out here, to enjoy a beautiful gray and rainy day, to get outside of the house, to get the endorphins flowing and the cannabinoids flowing throughout the body. Yeah, you get the cannabinoids. You don't just get that by going behind the tennis shed at the high school. That's the point of running. And so if we're coming out here, being consistent, staying healthy, getting the heart rate up and enjoying it, we're gonna get a lot of those benefits. And if we're being consistent with it, 
even if say say we run five days out of the week and say they're all relaxed runs we're in a base building period we're not training specifically we are just trying to become better at runners before we train for a half marathon say three out of those five runs your heart rate is in a zone three great you worked more moderate pace ranges you're gonna still strengthen your legs and if you've stayed healthy you're getting good stimulus while keeping the stress on the body maybe it's a little higher but if you're staying healthy, you're doing the exact right thing and your heart is still going to get stronger, right? So you can get so many of these benefits by just being consistent. And even if you have three, this is my thing, right? I would rather be consistently suboptimal than inconsistently optimal. You like that word soup? I would rather come out here and execute imperfectly every day than to be perfect twice a week. And if you look at my gosh dang marathon time record, you can see there is some credence to that argument. We come out here, we lace up the shoes, we get the miles in daily, and we're going to make progress, whether or not we're in zone two or a gosh dang zone three. All right, let's talk about benefit number four. And this is where it gets a little more scientific. Pull up on my Bill Nye. You think Bill Nye ever dabbed? <laughs> People don't dab anymore. What do they do? Do they gritty still? I don't know. I don't even watch football. What are the new sellies this year? There was the one where they were standing on their heads. You guys see that one? They were doing a backflip on their heads. Uh, I have three kids now. I don't watch football. But fourth thing was, what was it? Oh, fuel processing. All right, fuel processing. So this is where it gets scientific and important and running in certain effort ranges will be a big contributor to making sure this goes right. So if we are training for the half marathon, or the marathon. The reason that many of us hit the wall, well, there are two, two main reasons. Psychologically, it just gets gosh dang hard to push through once you've been out there for two, two and a half hours. Another big reason though is we run out of fuel. The gas is out of the tank. What is that fuel? It is carbs or glycogen. The body actually has a whole lot of glycogen in it, way more than you would need to run but that is stored in your internal organs your muscles look at that ah gosh i think i just <laughs> i think I just pull my muscle trying to flex your muscles only have a certain amount of glycogen in there and when you're going out and running at that 5k pace that 25 minute 5k pace just going out tearing getting your pr you're burning up a whole lot of glycogen when you're slowing it down to that relaxed pace you are burning fat and when you run more and when you run farther, you're teaching your body consistently how to burn more fat. And if we're burning fat, we can run all day. We're burning fat right now. I'm burning fat right now. I'm still burning fat, baby. So if I'm walking around the neighborhood, I'm burning fat. If I'm jogging around the neighborhood, I'm burning fat. Once I start picking up the tempo a little bit, I'm burning more carbs, right? Walking, a lot of fat, little carbs. Jogging, a little more carbs, a little less fat. Zone two, a little more carbs, a little less fat. Let's call it 40% carbs, 60% fat. These are completely illustrative numbers. This is not exactly how it is at all. But zone three, oh, now moderate, we're going even carbs, fat. Sprinting, oh gosh, oh gosh. Or let's call it a 5K. That's a lot of carbs, that's not a lot of fat. And then sprinting, that's dang near 100% of carbs. Those are illustrative numbers. It was just meant to illustrate the faster we run, the more carbohydrates our body is burning the less fat. The slower we run, the more fat we're burning. And to run a strong marathon, you need to be burning a lot of fat and conserving carbs so that when we get to that two hour mark or the three hour mark, the only thing that's gonna be holding us back is our mind. That's what we want. We wanna to get to a place where the marathon is completely mental. We don't have to worry about, are we gonna slow down? And through training the right way, we can run a strong back half, man. Look at my Chicago marathon split. I'm really proud of this one because I consistently did two and a half hour long runs, three hour long runs, 100 miles a week, 110 miles a week, 110 miles a week, 110 miles a week, 110 miles a week. And the back half of that race was faster than the first half. We don't cramp, we don't fade, baby, because we put in the pain, the moderate pain, <laughs> the relaxed pain. That was my nickname in high school, relaxed pain. We put in the relaxed miles during training and a whole gosh dang lot of them to teach our bodies to burn fat and not carbs. So that's one of the big scientific benefits and that's why running in zone two is good if you wanna be a marathon runner. 
And again, I should have prefaced this whole thing by saying, and I'm gonna drop a timestamp to this. This is so important. There's training and there's running. If you are running for fun, for enjoyment, for general health, for cardio, because your doctor said to run, you don't have to worry about any of this. <laughs> if you're just running, forget this entire video unless you are interested in learning how to become an endurance athlete and train. But for general running, you can run whatever pace you want as long as you're staying healthy and enjoying it. Everything I'm talking about today is training. This is all training when we want to get specific adaptations for a specific goal. That's what training is, right? For running, it doesn't matter. It, re it really does not matter. You can run at whatever heart rate as long as you're enjoying it. But for training, that's when the fuel burning and the fat adaptations, that's when this becomes more important. And so on, on this point as well, this is why we fuel with gels during the race is to, again, teach our body or to help our body have more carbs to burn and have an external carb source so we don't run, run out of that glycogen. But that is the fourth benefit of zone two training and one of the reasons why zone three is not as good in some cases. And again, through the consistency principle, if we're consistent, it doesn't matter if doesn't matter if some days we're zone three and some days we're zone two. But when we start getting up into those faster pace ranges, we're gonna be burning more carbs and not teaching our body that so ever important skill for endurance athletes of fuel conservation. So that's number four. Number five. Oh, last thing I should say on there, it's if you want the scientific word, it is mito. Mitochondria, we're getting bigger and stronger mitochondria and we're teaching our mitochondria. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cells. Mitochondria are the ones that are pumping out those enzymes to convert carbs and fat into energy within the muscles. That's the, that's the science behind it. If you want a great description, again, Hansen's page 28, Hansen's Marathon Method. But fifth benefit of relaxed miles or zone two miles. This is not from any book. This is from me. This is me speaking now. This is me asserting an argument that this is the most important benefit. I'm going to save this for last. I did save it for last. Save the best for last. This is the Supwell certified important benefit of relaxed miles. Running economy. I strongly believe that the more we run, the more consistently we run, the better we'll get at it and the better our mechanics will feel. That's what running economy is. It's lowering the effort at a specific pace because we teach our body how to be more efficient at that pace. And a lot of people associate, hey, the way you improve your running economy is by running strides. That's a popular one, right? Strides. I do strides as well. But what are strides? 10 to 20 second surges. You can do them at the end of a run. You can do them at the beginning of a run. You can wake up at midnight and walk out to the middle of the street and do some strides. It doesn't gosh dang matter when you do strides. It doesn't matter how much rest you take. Some people do jogging rest. Some people do walking rest. Some people do three minutes of rest. Some people do 40 seconds. I typically do 20 to 40 seconds of rest and bang, 10 to 20 second surges at a 5K pace or faster. A lot of people associate improvements in running economy, so how efficient we are with doing strides. And there's a school of thought that doing strides and faster running is the best way to improve running economy. And I agree to an extent. I agree to an extent. However, more important, I argue, for newer runners is the consistency principle. We will get better and more efficient simply through running more. And my anecdotal evidence through this is looking at the corollary, looking at the opposite. What happens when I take a day off or two, day, two days off? I feel horrible. My heart rate is jammed. Man, out here yapping so much, turn the camera off. But whenever I take a day or two off, I don't feel that great. But not physically, but running, I don't feel, well, I don't, I don't feel that great physically either. I like running. It helps me feel good. Oh, man, I've been talking a lot. I got meetings. But when I come out here, the day after... A rest day. This is why I don't take rest days very often. I take a rest day every one to two months. I feel so weird. My mechanics feel so weird, so off, so clunky, and so awkward. And studies have shown 
that you lose a lot of your fitness within eight days. If you take eight days off, you'll lose a whole lot of your fitness. I don't know the percentage numbers off the top of my head. There is a, I'll, I'll dig up the, oh, this is extra work for me. I'm, I was going to say I'll dig up the page number. I'm not going to dig up the page number, but it's in the Jack Daniels book. The, what is it called? The Jack Daniels Running Bible. I forget the, the exact name. Running formula. It's in that book. Just if you look up uh, the injury, coming back from injury chapter or the rest chapter, he talks about how much fitness you lose after X number of days. I think the Fitz books talks about it as well. Point being, we lose a lot of fitness, those, those scientific adaptations when we stop running we also lose the skill adaptation so the skill of running isn't just the skill of having our heart beat and keeping the heart low I don't, I don't care about having a low heart rate the skill of running is coming out here being able to run strong for an hour or two hours and whenever I take any extended period of time off that skill starts going away so running relaxed miles running zone two allows us to run more and run longer and practice that skill of running more. And we get those running economy benefits through that. I argue. I argue. All right? And watch out. I might, man, maybe I have to go pop over to UNC Charlotte, do some testing, get a PhD. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not getting a PhD. Imagine what Charlie would say if I say, hey, honey, I think I want to get a PhD in running physiology. Divorce. <laughs> All right. So those are the five benefits of zone two or relaxed running honestly i talked way more than i was anticipating so i'm gonna make this run section super short <laughs> then we can wrap it up also the gopro is new so i was having some gopro drama yesterday so yeah i i don't know man i don't know we'll see how it goes today oh man i was talking for way too much these shoes are comfortable though So yeah, I'm gonna get this run in, talk to you guys out there about how I monitor my effort during runs. Then we can close it out with how to start implementing this into your training. Oh. All right, I changed some settings on this. Hopefully the shakiness is gone. Hopefully it looks better. And man, my legs are completely blastoided. Woo. Oh no. Oh no, I have my hobby jogger trucker hat on. Oh gosh. Oh, there we go. All right, I really hope this is better. This is day two with the new GoPro. I upgraded so that theoretically these running and talking sections would be more enjoyable to watch. Yesterday, it was horribly shaky because I had it on the factory settings. So hopefully that is fixed today. All right, anyway, you can see coming out here, I'm at a conversational pace range this is a relaxed run and look at this I actually just keep my watch on the time I keep my watch flipped to that time screen I don't have heart rate I don't have pace for these relaxed runs I like to keep it 100% relaxed which means not stressing about the data, not stressing about how fast I'm going, just getting out here and cruising. And over time, I've naturally just settled in on these relaxed run days to pretty much be perfectly running within zone two, not even on purpose. And that's why I like training by feel we can feel it out. We can feel out the same pace ranges that we need to get all those adaptations, those five benefits of zone two training. 
we can teach her. Oh, wow. Bro, I already got the big Santa out. Look at that. So it's a bit of a blend. The science is important, but being able to naturally find the pace that works best while still enjoying our runs is also important. And again, if we bleed into zone three, that's completely fine. We still get a lot of those benefits. And for most of us, the limiter for improving is not gonna be because we're running our, our runs with the heart rate too high. It's gonna be maybe the effort is too high or we're not running long enough. That's the only reason heart rate is important is because it's one of those lagging indicators. It's not important in and of itself, but it tells us how, how high the effort is. So we keep the effort low to run for longer. All right, mile one, that was 7.45 pace. These shoes are feeling awesome. Cushioned, comfortable, bouncy, softer than I remember. So they likely do take some break in. This is a winner. And Brooks is shopping reckless bangers this year. Just banger after banger. Also the monochromatic fit, or the, not monochromatic, but all black and white and gray. That's clean. That's a clean Monday right there. Bang. Most important thing for zone two miles, you gotta look fresh. You gotta come clean with some drip. All right, mile two, 716 pace. So a lot of the benefits I described, those five benefits of zone two training, those happen within 50%, roughly to 80% of heart rate max. And this is where the complication with zone two comes in because newer runners have trouble keeping it within that range. This is how I think about it. If you're gonna run for an hour, come out here, do the first few miles, look down at your watch if you want to, 15 to 20 mi uh, minutes in, and see what your heart rate is. Let's check mine. Bang. I didn't even plan that, look at that. 143. 15 minutes in, 143, that's perfect. So I'm not gonna worry about my heart rate for the rest of the run, because I found a good pace, I found my zone two, I can throw it out. And here's why. Here's why you should just find it and then throw it out. There's something called heart rate drift. That means the longer we go at the same pace, the perceived effort goes up and also, the heart rate goes up. So if we're cruising at this 715, 720 pace for a 20 mile long run, by mile 15, my heart rate is gonna be 155 versus 143, or maybe even 160, depending on how I'm feeling. And there's so many things that go into heart rate. So if you really want to find your don't do heart rate, do this a few times, look at your heart rate 15 to 20 minutes in, and that will be the effort that corresponds to the right pace. And the other thing with zone two, last thing I'll say, you always wanna finish these relaxed runs feeling like you can crush the second half faster than the first, if you needed to. Man, more leaf blowers. Yeah, we, we always wanna finish our everyday miles feeling like there's more left in the tank. Now, I know there might be a question, how do I avoid heart rate drift? Run more, that's, that's the only answer. If you wanna keep your heart rate lower, run more. Oh gosh. Bro, that's elder abuse right there. That dog is abusing the elder. That's crazy. But there is no virtue of having a low heart rate in and of itself. It doesn't matter. It's completely asinine. It's a non sequitur. 138 heart rate, who cares? 155 heart rate, who cares? We want the benefits that 
come with a certain heart rate range. But what we really want if we're training is to hit a certain goal time. So heart rate is a tool that will tell us how fast we need to run to get the adaptations to hit a certain goal time. So 50 to 80% of VO2 max for, a, or for of a heart rate max or 65 to 80% of VO2 max. Now this is a topic for another video, but VO2 max is a way that we measure oxygen consumption. So how much oxygen, how many liters per minute, per kilogram of body weight can we consume in process when we're going all out? That's VO2 max. So if you train by VO2 max, zone two would be 65 to 80% of your VO2 max pace. But really, relaxed conversational pace that you feel you could hold for a few hours or if you're just starting out that you could hold for a few miles. And again, there's no virtue of a low heart rate in and of itself. I wanna crush fast times when I'm training. I don't have a gosh dang about my heart rate. The GoPro looks better on the screen. I think it's better. I think it's better. We will see. I think it's better though. I'm hopeful that it's better. Huh. All right, so we just crested a giant hill and I've been talking. Let's look at my heart right now. Oh, 142, okay. I thought it was gonna be much higher. And that's the thing, sometimes it probably is much higher and my watch just isn't capturing it. But you can hear my breathing is more strained and I'm gonna recover on the flat. But look at that, heart rate isn't everything and especially with the way that these watches track. All right, between mile five and six, let's check the heart rate one more time. Look at that, 142. Beautiful, keep the effort even and the heart rate is staying in place. Again, I don't train by heart rate, but just illustrating here, once we find our cruising altitude, we just stick there, keep the effort relaxed and smooth. There's Charles. All right, man, I'm optimistic about the GoPro today. I was putting in the work on r slash GoPro last night in the YouTube GoPro Pros, updating the settings, so I think it's going to be better. I think it's going to be better than yesterday. So 10 miles, 7.15 pace. Look at that, beautiful. Right in my everyday relaxed zone. And man, these shoes, these are solid. It's another solid shoe from Brooks. Man, they have a lot of bangers this year. And here's the thing. I don't want to be out here hyping up every single shoe, saying every shoe is a banger and you need to add it to your rotation and you need to buy a million shoes. That's that's not what I'm trying to do. But, man, this is a, a banger. The thing is, if you have the Prima, if you have the Nimbus, if you have the Skyflow, if you have the Ultra Boost, you don't need this because it's going to do the same thing. But in terms of a cushioned everyday shoe... Now, a few years ago, this would be a max cushion shoe. I'm just going to call this, oh gosh, that's not, that's not what we want. It's not too bad. Trail damage or road damage, not too bad today. But in terms of a cushion daily trainer, it's broken in now. It's right in that Goldilocks gang zone. Not too soft, not too firm. Good stability, good bounce. Absolute tank. Highly recommend. Uh, I'm going to shower quickly and then we can close it out here. Talk through some takeaways. I had to pop out smelling like apple butter streusel. That was the body wash. I ran out of my traditionally masculine scented body wash rotten oak wood and damp moss so i was using charlie's apple butter streusel smelling that's a gentle autumn scent right there so let's close it out with three 
takeaways. There's a lot of science, there's a lot of philosophy, there's a lot of me yapping, but three takeaways, practical application. What does practical application mean? It means we're not just sitting inside our office with our nose in a textbook, we're getting out here and running. So how can you implement some of this? How can you take some of what we've talked about today and put it into your training? So first thing, consistency principle. Consistency principle, what does that mean? The more that we run, the more that we do anything really in life, the better better we'll get at it. And yes, there are points of diminishing return, but for most of us just starting out and running, we're not gonna reach that point for a long time. Staying healthy and getting active, getting after it every day, running 30 minutes a few times a week. If we're running twice, bump that up to three times. If we're running three, bump that up to four times. If we're running only three miles, bumping that up to four miles and five miles. Stacking mileage over time and being consistent with it that's gonna get us all these benefits of zone two and allow us to sometimes say, hey, maybe my heart rate is higher today or maybe it's lower today or maybe I'm not feeling great today, but consistently that will get that batting average up. That will get the three point percentage up. The more shots we take in the gym during training, the better we're gonna get over time. It's a skill, it's like any other skill. Running is a skill. The more that we practice it, the better we get. So that's number one, consistency principle, be consistent, we'll get better. Also, within that specificity, running is a specific skill. The more that we do, the more that we do running, I guess, the more, the more that we do running, running is a skill, the better we'll get, and the more frequently, frequently we do it, the better we'll get. Again, remember my running economy argument. The more that we run, even if it's at a relaxed pace, the easier that pace will feel, not just because of the scientific, physiological, molecular adaptations, not just because our mitochondria are getting more efficient at burning fat versus carbs, but because our body feels more used to it. Our brain feels more used to it. We feel more connected to the skill, the practice, and the pursuit of running. So that's number one. Number two, the 15 minute rule. You guys saw me out there. I checked my watch at mile two. I said, bada boom, bada bang. My heart rate's at 140. I don't give a gosh dang where it goes for the rest of this run. I think it was 143. And I don't personally train by heart rate, but I was using it today and I was making sure my watch was strapped down tightly today so we got a good read. And that is the other thing, another reason why I don't track by heart rate. If you look at my long run yesterday, I actually throw it up here. If you look at the splits, you'll see all of a sudden mile, I think nine or 10, I actually got slower because I paused my watch to use the bathroom. So my heart rate should go down, right? Because I took a two or three minute break to go to the gas station. No, it jacked up to 170. Why is that? Well, that's because I then started tracking my cadence. So there is some technical user errors with these things. Another reason why I don't like to chain myself to the metrics and feel it out because then I don't have to worry about what the watch is saying because sometimes it's off. But assuming we are getting an accurate reading, whether you want to do a chest strap or an arm strap, I don't, I don't advocate using these. It's good to have it as a guide, but I think it can... It's better to be able to, here's the thing, it's good to have it as a guide. It's better to be able to know our bodies and feel it out. Think of a NASCAR driver on the track. There's a certain maximum speed that you can hit to not go out of control on the corner. The top drivers aren't checking the speedometer as they're hitting the corner. They know exactly how fast they're going without looking. They're hitting the gas at exactly the right angle. They're putting the steering wheel at exactly the right angle. And again, they're not saying, oh, I have to put the steering wheel at a 37 degree angle. Let me put a 37 degree angle monitor right here. They have all that stuff to look at. They have the speedometer and the gauges, but they're going by feel and experience. So the more experience we get, again, consistency principle, the better we'll get at feeling it out. But if you want to use this as a guide, 15 to 20 minutes into your run, check your heart rate and that pace, whatever that pace is, if it's within that zone two effort, keep that pace because the heart rate is just gonna go up. And hey, if you're only running 30 minutes, check it within six, seven minutes in. Point being, check it in after you're warmed up into the run before it starts getting too hard, and that will be your target pace range. Then third thing, what is even the target pace range or target heart rate range? Roughly 50% to 80% of heart rate max, that's a wide range. And this is why I'm more loosey goosey. This is why I'm more vibes by feel. There is such a wide range of paces and efforts where we can get all of those great scientific molecular adaptations. There's such a wide range where we're gonna strengthen the heart and we're gonna build up stronger slow twitch muscles. And we're gonna be sending 
more blood into the muscles and we're gonna be teaching our body to burn fat. There is a very wide range. There's a wide range, 50% to 80%. And for most of us, just getting out here, thinking about number one, consistency principle, just getting out here, whether we're running at 50% of our heart rate or 80 or even 85% of our maximum heart rate, we're still gonna be getting those benefits. So until we're running five, six, seven days a week consistently without injury, I wouldn't worry too much about the heart rate, but using it as a guide if you do wanna get the benefits of zone two, 50% to 80%. So my personal philosophy is not to stress out about this as long as we're keeping the effort relaxed, then we're great. And hey, if you're just starting out, no dang run is gonna be relaxed. So just getting out here and being consistent, whether that's running or whether that's walking. So to close it out here, let me let me give you a minute on the shoes. Ooh, that is a bright white shoe. That's a bright white shoe, baby. <laughs> that is a bright white Brooks Ghost Max. So absolute everyday banger. And oftentimes they say a lot of these daily trainers are not gonna blow you away with the run. This is a type of a shoe where it's almost blowing me away in a sense because it is just getting better with the more miles I put into it. It's reminding me a lot of the Puma Mag Max, a baby Puma Mag Max, lower drop, lower cushion, but so easy to run in, supportive, comfortable, definitely softer than when I got it out of the box. It reminds me so much of the Ghost Max 1, those qualities that I liked for walking, but in a running package. So if you're looking for a new cushion daily trainer, I would highly recommend this. Again, this is what I said when we were up there. If you have the Nimbus, if you have the Skyflow, if you have the Prima or the Ultra Boost, you don't need this. It's going to give you the same exact thing as all of those shoes just in a slightly different package. But good stability, good support, good bounce, good comfort, can handle a wide range of paces. This is the type of shoe, it's a zone two warrior. If you're crushing a lot of zone two miles, especially if you're a bigger or taller runner, I'm 6'2", 160. If you're taller than I am or way more than I do, you're gonna absolutely love this thing. It's a shoe that's gonna open up with time and get even better. So stay tuned for a 50 mile review soon. I'm really liking this. The thing is with these Brooks shoes, it's really hard to kill them. This thing is gonna last. 300 miles the grip was solid it's not it's not top tier it's right below it i could feel a tiny bit of slipping the mag max is going to have better grip the adidas shoes are going to have better grip but this is right up almost right up there with them way better grip than the hurricane 24 yeah if you have the hurricane 24 you probably don't need this either but if you are looking for a new cushioned daily to chew up a ton of miles is not a bad pick right there and look at this they added some more padding around the upper too so super comfortable shoe nice and comfortable tongue and Weather resistant. I ran in this in the rain and it's not even dirty. I'm just kidding, it's not weather resistant, but my neighborhood is clean. So there you have it guys. That's the ultimate guide to zone two. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I know my shoe videos are usually long. I'm still trying to figure out how to do these, these training talks, these training videos. If you enjoyed it, I don't ask you guys to comment or subscribe or anything, but I am gonna ask you if you enjoyed this video to comment and let me know because I'm still, I'm getting reps with these training videos, bringing them back on the channel. I want to make training topics a bigger part of the channel with the shoes. I love the shoes and I love the training. So we're gonna bring it together. They're equally as important for me in my enjoyment and experience as a runner. So let me know if you enjoyed this video and what other training talks you wanna go to next. Cause I'm gonna be doing hopefully at least I'm gonna just commit to one of these a week. I've been doing them every Monday, if you've noticed. So I didn't even plan it, it just happened like this. Uh, this is my third or fourth Monday. And I, yeah, I appreciate everybody for all the support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me as I figure out the best way to bring more insights to the channel, whether that's the gear or whether that's the training. So I'll be back tomorrow with another video. All right, man, Supwell Kitchen Refuel. Here's the thing, none of these zone two shenanigans matter if you don't eat. It's dang, it's noon right now, and I haven't eaten anything since I stopped running. I'm super hungry. I had a glass of OJ, that's it. So you got to refuel. So what do we have here today? Some vegan crumbles. I think these these look like the Abbots to me. I wonder if Charles went to Target. Absolutely love these. Sweet potato for some good carbs. Oh, look at that. A little quinoa, quinoa hiding down there. Pineapple salsa some vegan Mexican cheese, and avocado. This is going to be fire. And then I'll probably do some more zone two mileage this afternoon. So see you guys tomorrow.